How are you doing? Dan Fitzmaurice here. Got a little tech tip. Wanted to talk about, about the M8 oiling systems. You know, we're heading into the fifth year of the uh, Milwaukee 8 engine base. And of course, there's been a lot of development by our company and other companies in the industry about how to improve the power of it. And of course, one of the things that we really work on in a way, big way is we try to make the engines more durable. <clears throat> now, one of the things we're going to talk about today is the oiling systems and how they work and how they protect the engine parts. So this little clip is going to be about the piston oil and jets, which we have one for the front cylinder and one for the rear. And what we want to encourage all of our customers to do is to remove these piston oil and jets to get them off the engine base when they're putting the top in as part of the qualifying of the lower end. This way you can determine if the gaskets are ruptured, if the, the oiling jets are not sealing properly on the case. In some cases we even see metal debris that has been floating through the oiling system that collects up into this area and you want to get all that stuff flushed out of the engine base before putting your big bore kit on. Part of that qualification process is to get these removed, uh, get them inspected. You can buy new ones to put in there. It's an OEM part and your kit comes with new gaskets that are made to seal better there and getting any of that loose material breaking away from there is so important to secure the, the many good miles of, of life out of your big bore kit. As you'll see in a test that we're getting ready to roll out, you're going to see the difference of an oil jet that actually opens and closes at the proper pressure, but it has a very serious restriction in one of the jets that something's lodged up in there that you can't see it, and this test will actually demonstrate so you can see the, air, the flow rates of one piston jet versus the other. All right, we are checking a rear piston cooling jet uh, in the operation at 30 PSI. This is the front piston cooling jet, which has a restricted flow set at 30 PSI. <clears throat> that is an 11 inch ring that we're using for comparative purposes to know when we've reached the same diameter. So on the oil jets themselves, one of the, you know, once you get the oil jet removed and we make sure we removed any debris and we're going to put some new gaskets in there. But the thing that you don't want to do is just put it back on because you don't know whether it flows properly, whether the check valve sets properly. It, it, it's, a, it's a function where it has to blow off at about 13 to 15 pounds. That one millimeter oil is flow, that hole is fill, flowing the oil up to the, to the piston to cool it. And so it's always best to slip two new factory jets in there that you know haven't been there. If you found debris in your oil tank or in your, uh, your oil pan uh, or whether you found it in here when you removed it, you should replace them. Because once something gets lodged up inside there, uh, you're not likely to, to be able to do anything about that. Additional things you want to take a look at is there are times we have seen the piston jet is actually clogged shut. And I have a little picture here to demonstrate what that looks like with magnification. So you can see that jet, that one millimeter feed hole is blocked completely shut. This is from two separate engines. And we're starting to see more of these, read some reports from some of our customers who contact us about this. And obviously that jet needs to be replaced because the, it's not going to oil properly and we don't know 
what's stuck inside the canal or the check valve. So you just want to make sure that's replaced. When you see that, this is black RTV, silicone sealer. That sealer likely came from excessive amounts of it that was squeezed out when the cases were put together. And some of that stuff, what it'll do is it'll break off and then find its way through the oiling system, get churned up in the oil pump, make its way back to the oil tank. And when it goes back into these canals, because the piston oilers feed vis-a-vis -vis the tappet blocks, there's a canal in there that feeds there. In fact, if that RTV gets in there, there is just, it's going to stop things up. It's, it's going to be a problem. And you're going to have severe engine damage to whatever part where that oil is starved. So when you encounter something like this, where you have a, a very serious restriction, or in the case of these two particular engines, that's 100% uh, uh, obstruction there. What's going to happen is the thrust side of the piston, you got one side is the thrust side, and you can see this black death that's on this piston. And this is what happens when the, the oil is restricted or in some cases cut off. So the oil that was there before all this had happened, before the blockage occurred, it thermally breaks down. Even if you have the best oil in there, when it's down to very little lubrication film that's on there, it's going to get so hot so quick, it's going to thermally break down. And then you can see this particular piston, it is just, it is growing bigger than the size of the liner. And once that happens, even though it's not on the non-thrust side, you can see a little bit of scar in there, but most of that's the debris that's from this. This is where all the heat is on this one side, and it's finished because there's just not enough lubrication to keep it going. You want to prevent this from happening by always being able to assure when you put your big bore kit together that you know your piston jets have been tested or they're new, you've got good sealed gaskets, you've removed all the debris, Perhaps you've even taken the oil pan off, especially if you have any kind of damaged parts when you put the big, uh, big bore kit on. You want to get that oil pan dropped and get that oil system flushed out. So if you have any questions about the piston oil and jets, about the oiling system, or about the assembly process of your Milwaukee 8, just contact us. We, uh, the PDF documents will be on the website. Uh, or you can email us if you have any questions related to the process. We'll be happy to assist.